welcome Austin Surratt. This essay is called Welcome to the Family. Samantha and I had met in August 2016, and throughout the month we went from being perfect strangers to absolutely inseparable. We talked about everything together, writing, music, art, love, travel, family. At the end of the month, I was leaving to vacation in Denver with my friends for a week. The day I was supposed to leave, Sam drove me to the airport so I could catch my flight, and right before, she, right before I left, she said, don't forget about me. How could I forget you, I said. You still owe me for dinner last night. Mm -hmm. At the time, I only allowed Samantha to see the polite dad joke side of my humor. Usually my humor is as black and blue as a corpse in a Cookie Monster costume. Mm -hmm. She mentioned before I left that during Labor Day weekend, she would be up with her family at her Uncle Bob's house in Drake's Island, a small beach town on the coast of York, Maine. She said I was welcome to come up and meet her parents the night I'd fly back. And I said yes, without a second thought. And after a week of becoming a self-proclaimed connoisseur of legal marijuana, I dropped my duffel bag full of clothes off at my apartment in Dover and picked up another one that was already packed and headed north. And I was addicted to Sam like a drug. I crossed Salmon Falls into South Berwick and thought about her lovely green eyes like the Irish countryside. I turned the corner and cruised down Route 9 into North Berwick, smiling the whole trip and thinking about nothing but her for the 45-minute ride. And when I finally found the house, she was waiting on the lawn in an angelic white dress which waved in the Atlantic breeze. And I parked in the middle of the street and rolled down my window, and she leaned in through it and we embraced as though we had been separated for years. And then I opened my eyes. And I looked over her shoulder, and in the house, the eyes of more than two dozen strangers were suctioned on the windows like those spooky Halloween decorations. And that's like 50, almost 50 eyes staring at us from every window in the house, and I just felt their stares just searing my neck. Samantha jumped in the passenger seat. And in those few seconds we drove from the street into the driveway, I started to recall little details about her family that she had told me over the month that we had been dating. Details that had fallen on ears deafened by new love. Well, if you come to my aunt and uncle's house, you'd be meeting my parents for the first time. And like 20 of my other family members in my extended family. Oh, and no one knows how we met. We met on Tinder. <laughs> So, my family is a little crazy, everybody drinks a lot of alcohol this weekend, and they're all deaf, or some of them pretend to be deaf. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yeah, so my dad kind of has a new gun now. My sister was drunk one night and tried to sneak back into my house and scared my parents accidentally, and he felt like our family was unprepared for intrusion. And at that moment, I thought, what if I just kept driving? <laughs> like, I could go back to Dover and kind of pretend I wasn't ready to see her parents and her family. But the problem was is that I was still some stranger from the internet who has a car that lost automatically when in motion. And if all of this went down in front of 20 of her relatives, I would certainly have my Twitter account indefinitely suspended. We pulled into this beautiful seaside mansion and walked across the lush, manicured lawn. As we approached the large glass door on the porch, the pot left over in my system for my vacation tickled my anxieties. Do I smell like weed, I wondered? Do I look like I smell like weed? <laughs> we walked into the mansion to complete silence, the type of silence comparable to pulling a crap pipe out at your nephew's bris. <laughs> the interior featured an open concept living room and kitchen. Every single seat on every couch, table, and lazy boy was occupied by a person, all glaring in our direction. Even the dog, which had been barking at the sound of someone entering the house, had gone silent 
presumably waiting on cue for a swift testicle attack. <laughs> Just before I was about to greet everyone hello, a voice came from the back of the room. Good luck, Uncle David! Everybody turned to a stern-looking man sitting at the head of the kitchen table. Sam's father sat with his back straight, glass of gin and tonic in his hand, looking directly into my eyes without blinking. He had the same color iris as his Samantha, but instead of the Irish countryside I had admired in hers, in his I saw the color of the grass that would likely grow around the base of my tombstone. <laughs> as David stared, a woman in the back burst to life. Hello, hello, she said, her jet black hair bouncing up and down as she moved to greet me. Samantha's mother bounded towards me, and the rest of the family followed suit. And I was bombarded with a Bob, an Eddie, a Heather, a Mary, a Maria, a Michelle, a Michael, two Sues, two Franks. The list continued. And it was difficult to remember everybody's name, not because I shook hands with 20 strangers in a row, but because I was too busy staring at each one of their faces to see if they smelled pot on my clothes. <laughs> And through it all, David sat staring at me as I was greeting my, greeting my way towards him. He beckoned me to sit down and took a long sip from his drink. I sat down, and as he started to field his questions, I felt Sam's family gravitating towards me while still pretending that they weren't paying any attention to us whatsoever. The talk felt like an interrogation. State your name. Austin Surratt. Where do you live? Dover, New Hampshire. How'd you guys meet? At a concert? Because <laughs> I wanted to tell the truth, but at the time I felt awkward about admitting to using Tinder. Uh, especially with older folks who were unfamiliar at the time of online dating and only learned about its predator qualities on Dateline NBC. <laughs> Dave grilled me for a while longer, and before he could ask for my social security number for a background check, Samantha grabbed me by the arm and led me back outside. We walked barefoot down the dirt road towards the dark, deserted beach. We climbed an empty lifeguard tower and watched the waves roll back from the shore into the night. And now the stories of Denver flow with the salted air of Maine's coast, and her eyes twinkled in the moonlight. And I gazed at her, and I felt so grateful that I hadn't kidnapped the shit out of her earlier. <laughs> and about an hour later, we held hands and strolled back up to the mansion. Upon seeing it, I noticed that every light in the window was not obstructed waiting for us to return, which was even more frightening than when I had people staring through it uh, as we pulled up. We walked into the house to find everyone circled, cult-like, around the kitchen table. At the sound of the closing screen door, all 22 heads looked back at us. Cards Against Humanity had been spread all over the table. <laughs> There were only two seats open at the table, one on the further side of the table and one on the opposite side, right next to David. He beckoned me to the chair next to him, smiling wickedly. When I sat down, I noticed a phone placed in front of me. The screen was open. Fearing to look directly down, I glanced down at the glowing screen. The phone had been on a website featuring a grid of menacing black pistols, m and 45s and revolvers with safeties, thumb locks, and of course, silencers. I panicked, sweat beaded on the back of my neck. I looked up and everybody was grinning at me, waiting to see what I would do. Oh, whoops, Dave said, snatching his phone back. How the hell did that pop up? You weren't supposed to see that. Everyone at the table erupted into laughter. Dave clapped his hand against my back and smiled reassuringly. And I smiled back and I laughed along with him. Welcome to the family, one of Sam's aunt's jokes. And the rest of the night was spent drinking, eating, laughing, and telling jokes. Not dad jokes, but humor that was dark and dirty and cracked me up. The next morning, as everyone left, I hugged everyone goodbye, including David. And Samantha and I drove off to Kenny Bunk to walk around the port. We weren't a quarter of a mile away from the house when I turned to Samantha. You know, what your dad did was about as close to pulling a gun on me as actually pulling a gun out of his pants, I said. <laughs> she smiled. I told him you had just come back from Colorado, and everybody thought you were going to be high. <laughs> and two and a half years later, Samantha and I are still together. 
And in 2019, I'm taking Sam's parents to a very special dinner. And I'm hoping they accept the invitation on their own will. Because you can buy some really nice guns for the cost of an engagement ring. <laughs> Thank you.